Ja, schönen guten Morgen. Ich begrüße Sie zu einem weiteren Tag auf dem DGI-Kongress. Herr Elling und ich führen Sie jetzt durch das nächste Programm, durch die neue Sitzung Nummer 8, innovative, individuelle IOL-Konzepte. Ich denke, das wird eine sehr interessante Sitzung werden mit Sachen, die Sie vielleicht noch nicht gehört haben oder zumindest zum ersten Mal hören werden. Ich denke, dafür ist die DGI auch bekannt als erster Kongress im Jahr, gerade die neuen Sachen, die Sie dann später auf dem ISCS, ASCS hören, hier werden Sie schon vorgestellt. Und am Anfang ist es mir eine besondere Ehre, den ersten Redner vorzustellen. Ich würde jetzt auf Englisch äh, äh, wechseln, um ihn äh, auch entsprechend zu würdigen. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to welcome Philippe Sodi, uh, my good friend. And we know each other for, I don't know, 30 years, which means that I am also very old. And uh, he is really uh, one of the, uh, I would say, one of the giants in ophthalmology, in cataract surgery, in IOL research, in PCO research. And we were able to get him for two very interesting uh, uh, topics and lectures. The very first one is called Open Implanted Capsular Bag for Capsules Transparency. Uh, a 20 years uh, personal experience and he will really share here Uh, his, his whole lifetime achievements and work on uh, PCO and capsular bag research. So please listen uh, to Philippe's first lecture. It's a pleasure and honor to be at your meeting. I would love to be there in Rio. Why and how should the bag remain transparent? What are the past and present propositions? What is my personal experience and do we have new elements of knowledge? Fibrosis could create 3D displacements, opacities, and a rigid system. Fibrosis can also be a refractive threat on stability, the hyperopic shift. It will prevent any movement related to pseudo or real accommodation. Despite a lot of work, No additional treatment is clinically available to preserve the whole bag transparency. The open bag approach has given very positive results in achieving such a transparency, especially by allowing aqueous humor contact to the germinative cells. In 1991, Tsuto Muhara paved the way to prevention with the endoequator ring. We still rely on Nishi's creativity with a capsule tension ring and optic sharp edges. The spring IOL was Hara's first design, a very ahead of its time double optic for accommodation. Allen developed a combination of ring plus IOL with holes in the ring to allow direct aqueous contact. Nagamoto's capsular adhesion prevention ring was experimentally efficient. The Synchrony IOL was a double optic open bag, not conclusive for accommodation, but with amazing results in terms of capsular clarity. The ANU IOL uses holes in the ring for aqueous circulation. Brilliant experimental results. The 18% hydrophilic acrylic material does not facilitate the placement. The Power Vision approach introduces accommodation by optic curvature changes with a fluid filled device. The incision size is reported to be over 3 mm. Opira, Atia Vision, Juvin IOLs are under clinical trials with promising results. They all are circular devices, open capsular bag. Different approaches to create depth of field their volume might be a problem for the incision size. In 2000, we developed with Cornea the six angulated haptics IOL with two objectives, to keep the anterior capsule away from the optic and to exert a circular lex migration prevention at the equator. Capsular clarity, anterior capsule distant from the optic, no change on the capsular axis size. 
a few pearls are present at the periphery. Over 15,000 implanted devices, very low capsulotomy rate, but it was a bulky IOL with possible overlapping or non-contact of haptics. Good morning. The open bag approach seems to achieve capsular clarity and to avoid a rigid implanted bag. But we need to improve our knowledge on the anatomical elements of accommodation. Early results with autopsy eyes and UBM illustrated a very significant variation in lens diameters. In 2015, at the Medicontouri SCRS Symposium, we proposed a lens diameter calculation based on lens curvatures and lens thickness. From there, we started some clinical investigation in Bordeaux, first presented in 2019. Among other information, this machine automatically indicates the theoretical diameter. How close to reality is this reconstruction of the lens diameter? Marina Modesti and Giacomo Agostino checked this from their own UBM measurement. There is a close relation with an average difference of 100 microns. Based on 57 eyes analysis, we confirmed the large lens diameter individual variations. There was no relation between the diameter and the actual length. A 90 years old empty capsular bag remains elastic. Critical for accommodation is the preservation of ciliary muscle contractility. The strength is around 50 millinewton, sufficient to exert pressure on the device. New devices should have two different or combined objectives, capsular clarity, real or pseudo-accommodation. A new IOL should be an open bag with a circular ring injectable through a small incision aiming at intraocular movements. A first series of rabbit has been conducted with Liliana Werner. At one and six weeks, the capsules are transparent UBM confirmed the absence of contact between the anterior capsule and the optic and a clear implanted capsular bag at six weeks. We now have all the elements for a further step in our patient satisfaction. Several clinical studies are on their way to transparent and moving implanted capsular bags. Let's shake our hands. Au Wiedersehen. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much, Philippe, for this very nice uh, uh, lecture and also getting all the information that has been gathered over yeah, 20, 30 years uh, and focus it together to one, one concept. Um, how much do you differ in your, uh, in your opinion from the ideas that we hear from Nishi, the capsular bending and the anterior-posterior capsule must... Uh, adhere together. I think there's some contradiction here, wouldn't you say that? Yes, well, yeah, th thank you. Uh, I hope you saw the presentation. I couldn't see it myself on the screen, on my screen, but this is maybe a technical problem that can be solved. Uh, I just discussed by email uh, with uh, Hoki Nishi uh, these last days. I sent him my presentation. He said, this is the end of square edge. I said, no, it is not, because the square edge is the way to limit the volume of this peripheral ring, the circular ring. So capsular bending is supposed to, was uh, aiming at pre preserving the posterior capsule transparency. 
But we know that as soon as um, the anterior capsule touches the aorta elliptic, it becomes fibrotic in a few weeks. So capsular bending has been very good to, again, to preserve posterior capsule, but it is definitely a rigid system per se. And we also know, Rupert Menapach has shot beautiful pictures of that, that uh, the capsular bending after a few years, under the pressure of the new lens material, the pearls, etc., can uh, reopen and there can be a migration of pearls behind the posterior face of the optic. So capsular bending aims only at the posterior capsule. The open bag uh, is a supple system with transparent, but for accommodation, and we saw that, you know, Gerd, many years ago mm -hmm. with Jean-Marie at the Jean-Marie Parel at the Accommodation Club, we must have a proper sizing, a proper positioning, and uh, cl uh, clarity, which also means suppleness. These are the prerequisites to accommodation. And this is why the current concept of open bags with these large devices I showed in the presentation is interesting. But all these uh, large rings certainly have an incision size problem. This is why on the implant, on the prototype you briefly showed, uh, it is compatible with a 2.2, 2.4 millimeter injection. Did I answer your question, Gerd? Yes, of course, you did. Uh, and I also think that uh, we, we have to differentiate between the pure PCO preventing effect of a kind of two-point fixation C-loop lens versus the, caps, the open capsular back concept where you uh, attack the capsular back at 360 degree. I think that is the, the key element here. And the incision size problem, as you can see with some of the new developments, could be uh, uh, attacked by using a modular approach, like putting a ring in through a small incision and then putting an optic in and fix them inside the eye, like the uh, Juvenile lenses uh, from uh, that you just yes. uh, showed. So th there is a way to get to that point, technically, I think. And uh, yeah. uh, But you showed uh, beautifully that uh, accommodative lens technology is depending on this approach of the open back uh, concept. Maybe we have one short question from our auditorium. Um, maybe one short question, one short answer. Why do you think, Philip, um, the axial length does not play any role in this case? Can you hear me? Does this where, uh, who, to does this question go to the audience? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, it's from the audience. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Good morning. Um, so the question was, big eyes have big bags and small eyes, small bags. Why do you think the axial length does not play a role? This goes to me? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yes, we, we work, uh, many works has been done on the concept that uh, short eyes, small bags, long eyes, large bags. Statistically speaking, this is not true. Uh, the, the OCT, the Casia 2, uh, even if it's not, again, there can be a hundred microns difference between the reconstructed diameter and the real one. Uh, this tells us that there is no statistical relation between the actual lens of the eye and the, the capsular bag size, the lens diameter. And this is very important because not all hyperopic eyes have small bags and not all myopic eyes have large bags. And this, we have to reconsider a number of things and a number of diameters that have been built according to the initial thinking. Uh, of course, anything related to accommodation would certainly have to be tailored uh, it cannot be a mass production for accommodating IOL. Every single lens diameter should be considered. And I think this is why this new approach to measure the lens diameter with optical means, such as the OCT, 
is critical because, as we all know, the use of UBM uh, can hardly be considered as potentially routine use, especially in a large clinic. Yes, Thank very good. You. We have to go on now, but I will see you in a, in a while uh, again uh, with a second topic.